the fastest growing talk show podcast in America. Welcome to the Jay and Brian Show. Welcome everybody to the Jay and Brian Show once again. Uh, powered by My City Lender, a refreshingly simple way to get a home or commercial real estate loan. Uh, really, really excited. We're going to have a fun conversation today with our great friend, George Easton from True Footage Appraisal Company. Is that how you say it? Yeah, appraisal company. Okay, awesome. Um, George, we've become good friends. He also uh, works with a great friend of mine, Dan Demerit. So Dan, if you're listening, shout out to you as well for introducing us to George. Uh, George brings over 20 years of boots on the ground experience in the appraising industry, providing uh, valuation services, constructive reviews of appraisal. So he knows the insides and outs of appraisals, um, spends a lot of time educating others on the appraisal process. He's a presenter, he's uh, a speaker, um, does a lot to uh, shed a really good light on the profession of, an, which is an important profession of, of appraising. And um, we're gonna essentially break our show in about four different segments. So we're gonna start by talking to George about, um, have him share interesting stories about his time in the field. I'm sure he's got some good ones. Um, he's been doing it for 20 years. Um, from there, we're gonna talk to George about hot topics in the real estate industry. Um, a lot of changes in terms of valuations, in terms of underwriting guidelines, so we're gonna dive in there as well. Um, we're gonna introduce a new segment to our show called Ask the Appraiser. Oh, no. So we've got, <laughs> we've got, we've had a lot of uh, our listeners send in questions about appraising. There's just, there's a lot of things on people's minds, and so we're gonna have George answer those, help us answer those as best we can. Um, and then we'll kind of wrap it up with a, a segment on what is your home worth? So we'll have George kind of give us a behind the scenes look at the appraisal process and share his tips on how people can get the most value out of their homes. George, welcome to the show. It's great to have it. you here. Thanks for having welcome me, Welcome to the show. <laughs> Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about you? Like, l have, let the audience know who is George? Oh, that's, a, that, that's quite a story. Um, nothing interesting, but it's long. Um, I'll give you the uh, Cliff Notes version. Um, I've been appraising 20 years, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. but this is not what I started doing. Um, when I graduated college, I uh, got my degree, but really didn't know what I wanted to do, became a stockbroker. Got my so you went to ATO at UC Riverside. I did my research too. <laughs> so maybe of, maybe it's no wonder that you didn't quite know what you wanted oh, to do coming on. out of college. No, no, no. <laughs> That's I was a Theta Chi at UC Santa Barbara, so I mean we knew what we were doing. I got some successful ATO brothers from my chapter. We were we were neighbors with the ATO chapter oh, that's up hilarious. there. Yeah. Oh Their big God. islander party is what I remember year after year. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> um, no, so you know, I think a lot of people when they get out of college, they still don't really know what they want to do. Um, I Seems got like a lot of that now. Mm -hmm. My, well, you know, you're only 21, right? Yeah. You know, you got six months of reality check it when you're about to graduate. You go, oh, my God, I don't know what I, I'm done partying, I think. <laughs> um, but anyways, I graduated. I um, met a stockbroker and I got my Series 7 and 63 license. And okay. um, as I was taking that class, um, I met a guy and he's all, well, what company do you work for? And it was some no-name company. He's all, you should come work for my company. And Stock is this like Wolf of Wall Street stuff? Oh my God, stuff? it's exactly that. <laughs> okay. I just watched the beginning of Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street. Maybe um, be careful of the stories you share. I don't well, know. <laughs> I'm not leaving. <laughs> um, that The boiler room is exactly that. Okay. I mean, that you're in there, everybody's wearing a suit, even if you can't afford it. Mm -hmm. You get a stack of cards and you're smiling and dialing and you're trying to get people on the phone. And um, if you can, if you can, close a certain amount of accounts within a certain amount of time you graduate to the next level you get staff under you that they, they do the dialing yep. um but anyways i did that and hated it um but i had moved back from uc riverside to my home in orange county okay. and i was commuting through the blue line to downtown los angeles every day hmm. and um hated that and um met a few guys and they said hey we're moving to Arizona, gonna work for a competitor, and we've heard some good things about you. Would you like to go with us in them all? I got nothing going on here, sure. So moved out to Arizona, 93-ish, 1993, and we did that, and um, I still realized this isn't for me, and gave that up, and I actually went back into what I did earlier in life when I was a teenager, I went to work in retail. And I worked for a company called Circuit City, and I was a manager there, but, um, did that for a while, and that's where I met my wife, and or soon to be wife. And I mm -hmm. said, "Hey, we got to get out of Arizona. This sucks here. It's too hot, and I can't stand it here." So moved to San Diego, got married, went to work for a dot com company. How many people say that these days? It sucks here in Arizona. Let's move to. Hey, it all comes back. It all comes back. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> my my friends in California are listening. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. here now. <laughs> 
This is back when I was single. But yeah, this was also in the 90s, right? Okay. Mid 90s. So yeah. What, our, what did the freeway stop at like the power road or something? Let, right? Oh, out here, yeah. Here's, yeah. here's our exit from Arizona. We stopped by the groundbreaking of Chase Field. Okay. Which okay. is where the, wow. the Diamondbacks yeah, okay. play. I got yep. a picture of me in front of dirt and a big frame that says future home of the, the uh, Diamondbacks. Oh, so that's can when you we sent us it. that picture? That's pretty I, cool. It's, it's an actual physical photo. Oh, okay. i got to find it okay, somewhere. Okay. It's in a box or something like gotcha. that. So I moved to San Diego. Um, I left retail because I was wanted to get in the dot com. So I worked for a company called Fans Only. Not only fans, fans only. And we did the official athletic websites for basically any Division One sports program you could think of. Okay. So all the Pac-10, Big Ten, Miami. Oh, awesome. We did all the websites for them. So all their news stories. Now, obviously, it's for fans who don't live there, and they could keep up. And with this it. was like e-commerce before well, Amazon. The, the point is, this was just news. This okay. was sports okay. scores and all that. And the, we got a brainchild. What if we sold stuff, too? And okay. so you're reading about how Texas Tech beat Texas in such So like a, a store on the website. Exactly. Okay. Which is, which is commonplace everywhere now. In fact, you can't do anything without seeing an ad for something to buy. But like Jay said, this was before this Amazon. This is before. That's the, th that's the yeah. point. This is when Jeff Bezos was that dude in his closet selling books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I helped build 22 official stores across the country. Um, Texas Tech was the first. I mentioned that Tulane and Miami and Oklahoma. Okay. Um, ACC uh, conference, all that kind of stuff. And then the dot-com bust happened. Um, so a lot of people lost their jobs, including me. Um, mm -hmm. But since then, we had got married, um, bought a house, had a child, and we're refinancing. And uh, a guy comes to my house, and he's like 90 years old, the appraiser. <laughs> and I'm all, that guy's got job security. He's getting paid to walk around my house. And he's like 90. He's not going to get fired. He's still doing it. Yeah. yeah. He's probably still doing it. So that's when I decided to pursue that. And I'm thinking, wow, I wasted okay. a lot, lot of my life. But um, finance background, customer service background, internet, mm -hmm. um, all that kind of stuff came together to help me hit the ground running as an appraiser. So, so. you got started in Los Angeles in appraising. Actually, yes. Um, so this is a perfect segue to our first section here on, on what, what you've seen in the field in your days. And I'm sure in LA, there's a lot of color. In there, in there. We could start there. <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, let's, let's start with like unique homes or unique customers. You know, what, what are your favorite stories from, you know, there? you know, what's funny is you would think that, um, it's like, Oh, that's 18 years ago. How am I going to remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't remember houses I've appraised in Arizona a week or two weeks ago because it's all track homes. Arizona, I'm sorry, California has a ton of unique properties, unique situations. Mm -hmm. I still remember a lot of houses I did out there. And again, it's more the situations that I remember too. Okay. A lot more historic homes. I did houses that had um, boilers in the basement. With oh, no way. Boilers? Of, of, yeah, it's like a weird, it's straight out of like Freddy Krueger. How old would a no house be? Like a hundred year old house. hundred years, okay. Where there's a basement with a giant, it's like um, a furnace in the basement and a bunch of arms going to the various rooms. How oh, cool. Weird stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I've done that. Um, famous people? Yeah, I've done a lot of famous people. We had a client who was the accountant. His wife was the accountant to a lot of soap opera stars. So I appraised a lot of soap opera stars' houses. So and we were other, just talking wow. about the daytime Emmys the other day. <laughs> were you really? Yeah. Yeah. So I get an assignment. This is not planned at all. And um, I, I get this assignment. It's in uh, Hollywood Hills. No, no, no. Where was it? I think it was Hollywood Hills. And um, I get to the house, and I Googled the person before, and she was an Emmy-winning actress. I don't watch soaps. So I didn't know who she was. Get up there. The door opens up. Uh, just a cloud of smoke comes out, like a Cheech and Chong movie. Oh, man. <laughs> but it's not pot. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and this dude, uh, the, the woman answers the what door. Was but she said not pot. It was just cigarettes. Oh, okay. It was okay, just okay. cigarettes. Lots of smoke. And she stands there, and I'm all, hey, that's the girl from the, the soap opera that I Googled. And she's all... You look really familiar. And I'm all, shouldn't I be what? saying that to Wait. you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I go in there. She has one Emmy on um, the nightstand, not nightstand, on the kitchen counter. Another one is a doorstop. And I go out, I'm doing my thing, and I go outside, and the husband follows me, and he's all, where's your altimeter? You know, for altimeter? Yeah, for seeing how, what your elevation is, like on an airplane. Oh, because it matters in Hollywood Hills? And I'm just going, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I've never encountered an appraiser who has used an altimeter, um, but I played it off. Um, so that was that. I don't remember the house. It had a good view, but that yeah. was a situation. It's interesting. Um, 
It's through the same client. Uh, I remember a show called Saved by the Bell. Oh, yeah. Yep. Really? Oh, yeah. You guys, you guys are not that young. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm not that old. Um, I've done multiple houses of Mario Lopez. I've okay. done a couple oh, cool. that he bought. Um, he owned a lot of um, income properties throughout the L.A. area. Um, I did Tiffany Thiessen's house. I okay. had a crush on her, so I, I never got to meet her. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, did you ever get to meet her? No, I never met any of these people. I just did their houses. <laughs> I think a lot of us had a crush on her, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's and safe you, to say. That was it. Do you remember the Super Bowl girl who caught the uh, chip in her mouth? I don't remember her name, but I remember the commercial. Allie Landry. Okay. Okay. So I've done two or three of her houses in um, Hollywood Hills. Um, Los Feliz is the name of the neighborhood. Okay. That's where okay. a lot of the celebrities live. Turned out she was engaged to Mario Lopez. And okay. so, um, yeah, so I, I remember doing these houses, these 100 year old Spanish houses. And back then, a house like that's 1.4 million, mm -hmm. which is chump change nowadays. Right. Um, but no, I remember houses like that. Um, but then out here, I've done, you know, a lot, a lot of the same thing, track homes for the most part. Um, but I do have some. So hang on a second. Yeah. So. Why would you leave if there's all this color and, and interest and like variation in the house and like person? What made you leave LA to come well, be an appraiser out here? I, I various reasons. Um, first and foremost, cost of living in California is horrible. Okay. Secondly, as an appraiser, I got to drive everywhere, and so I was based in Orange County. I was a trainee, and my mentor would say, "You're going to San Fernando Valley. You're going to Hemet. You're going to San Clemente." You're going to uh, um, buckle up. You're going to be in the car for and, a while. And you cannot leave at 7 a.m. and do that stuff. You have to leave at like 9 a.m. You have to be done by 2 p.m. so you can get home at a reasonable time. Hmm. And you still, it's still horrible. So the traffic was horrible. Um, cost of living. I, we'd started our family. We now had our second child. Um, and I never wanted to work for somebody. I wanted to have my own company. And I said, well, I respect my mentor too much. He's a great mentor. But mm -hmm. my wife still has a lot of family in Arizona. Now the, the reasons for leaving Arizona are different than the reasons for coming back. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. I'm the one who actually proposed to my wife that we move back to Arizona. Okay. So um, I, I was strategic about it. And I said, what area is growing that doesn't have any appraisers? It doesn't have a lot of appraisers. So I established myself in Queen Creek. There's one guy, he didn't have a website, built my website, knew how to market myself, knew, knew how to network. Um, and that's, that's how I got established out here. And I was independent for quite a while. Um, when the crash happened, I did forensic work for Fannie Mae, which was going after bad loans. Hmm. Um, worked for another company, an appraisal management company, set up their... So was this going back to the forensic work? Was this a part of the time where you know people would foreclose on, st uh, on a home, but they would strip the home of all of its appliances oh, yeah. and light fixtures well, and... I've done both Baseboards and fill yes. the walls with water and... Copper out of the... That's exactly uh, it. I've actually appraised <clears throat> houses like that out here. And I got a story Seriously, that. like oh, after yeah. it had been completely destroyed like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Numerous. Where the air conditioner's gone, the yep. cabinets are gone... The drywall's taken out everywhere. I did a house. Oh my, drywall? Uh, well, they holes in the drywall so what? they can get stuff. I got pictures that say oh. F, B of A in spray paint. <laughs> oh, Bank, oh, Bank wow. of America. Oh my like gosh. Like parting words to, the, to them. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done houses where I used to call them rapture houses because you'd go there and it's like, I thought it's vacant. And there's, I saw one, there's a wedding dress in the closet. There's pictures everywhere. There's food. Just They're the gone. people vanished. They're gone. They're gone. Um, wow. So I saw a lot of despair back then. Okay. Um, I remember I did a house where, you know, we knew there's nobody home, but there's supposed to be a lockbox there. And I get out there and it's way out there and there's no lockbox. And I'm all, how am I going to get in this house? And I see a doggy door and I'm all, <laughs> do I dare try to go in this doggy door? And what if there's a squatter in here and just, you know, what if heart seals me? What if there's a German shepherd waiting for exactly. you? Exactly. What if there's anything? And I, I did it. I climbed through this doggy door to get in this house to do this re it was an reo appraisal and it sucked but when i did the forensic work that was for a company that was hired by fannie mae because they they said all right we got all these bad loans that we've taken back now who screwed up here did the borrower lie did the appraiser lie so we were doing the report the the work to see if the appraisal was flawed so if you have mm -hmm. a oh, three gotcha. bedroom two bath mm -hmm. house here and you have comps right around it that say 300,000, but you're using comps way over here that are 500,000. That's fraud. Yeah. So we were going after appraisals to see if there was any 
um, n if there is any intentional um, stuff going on. So hmm. that's that's okay. where Fanny would. Did, so did you find a lot of that in those? The the key is um, can you can you uh, do it in a way that is indisputable? So if you say there's no tra there's no traffic influence, and you look at an aerial and there's train tracks right there, you can't dispute that. But if you say, oh, the house is in good condition, and it turns out it wasn't, well, that's a shifting dynamic of a home. I've seen houses that are one year old that are trashed. And I've seen houses that are 30 years old that look immaculate and brand new. So condition can change quickly. That stuff they couldn't really go after. It's the stuff that was, hey, they used sales from five miles away yeah, that's, nine that's months nuts. ago. Yeah. And here's three sales, four sales, model matches within 90 days, and you didn't use them. Hmm. And they told, they told totally different values. That's the kind of stuff they were able to go after. Okay. So I kinda, it's kind of like a stupider liar kind of attitude. It's like, did this appraiser just screw up? or get away with it or is this yep. yeah they got something definitely on this Let, let's go back to the more fun stuff i'm sorry the, yeah uh, uh i want interesting stories you have or people that you met appraising here in arizona i think you when we had lunch you mentioned something about a han solo house <laughs> <laughs> i know i know i want to hear about jay's a big, big star, star wars, wars fan, fan. And we know we really? have lots oh, of star yeah, wars okay. fan listeners so I go to this house and it's in sossaman estates which is in queen creek oh yeah and woman answers the door she's an attractive woman and um I'm the appraiser, blah, blah, blah. I go do my outside stuff. And then I come to go and in, come inside and she's walking with me and go in the living room. And on the wall is a life-size carbonite of her. What? Frozen in carbonite of her. Not and Han she, Solo. Not Han Solo. But it was, it was, she was, it was not literally like that pose. Yeah, yeah. But it was a 3D full-size bronze or whatever of her in a negligee she wasn't wearing a you know burger king outfit <laughs> oh my gosh and so i'm looking at this going okay and she's right here wow she was, she was wow. two feet from me and here's this thing i'm all what's uh, going on <laughs> wow so there that's i call yeah, that the Han Solo yeah, you still have to do your job yeah and you i have, have to keep the composure do the job <laughs> I, I i take a lot of photos when i praise houses and i love taking photos of weird stuff um and dogs what's the weirdest um, thing you've taken a photo of I can't remember. Well, that so, sounds like it was one of them. So. Um, <laughs> sure. But the thing is, I couldn't get a picture of it discreetly. So uh, I, I don't have any evidence of this, but I remember exactly <laughs> where it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those things where you almost like have to go back and be like, hey, you know what? That's, not, that's not creepy at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I just got to get a picture of this. I forgot to take a photo of this. Yep. <laughs> you, you, Can you we get a selfie of this together? I don't know. You mentioned... Uh, a story about a uh, a dog jumping on oh god a client or something like that yeah so um actually this is right after i moved out here because um i was licensed which means you can appraise houses up to a million dollars and when you're in california that's worthless because everything was worth more but i figured hey in arizona a lot of houses are under a million i don't need my certification and so i got an opportunity to do a house in desert mountain and a friend of mine who's an appraiser um she I said, hey, you need to come with me because I need a supervisor with me. She said, okay, no problem. So she shows up, I show up, and she's wearing a white pantsuit, like, look like silk or something like this. And it's like, okay, that's not how I dress. I dress nicely, but anyways. So we get there, and here comes this dog bounding out, and it jumps on her, and it gets down and walks away, and now she's got blood stains on her oh my gosh blood just, stains? just trimmed the claws of the dog <laughs> oh man oh no and now my friend i'm we're still friends but she's got blood on her and the owner is Ugh. 20 feet away he doesn't say a word like, hey doll hey spot come on inside it's like <laughs> sit really sit down go lay down oh my gosh. so wow. i that's that's in the house was just a desert mountain house on the golf course I don't remember how big it was mm -hmm. but again it's the people that i've met the stories like any that. other stars homes um I've done a few baseball players. Um, trying to think of any other ones that stand out. I don't think seems so. like you'd have a lot in LA, but yeah, yeah, I I guess so. You know, here's my attitude: if you're rich, and let's say it's a star like you know a list celebrity, they're not getting an appraisal on their house. Okay, they they're paying cash or, right. or whatever. So um, the it's the lesser celebrities that I've run into. Okay. Um, the ones I mentioned, I've done other soap opera stars, but I, I don't watch soap operas, so I don't know any, who they are yeah. or anything like that. Um, oh, so you know The Rock. Speaking yes, yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah. The Rock, 
he lives in Calabasas. Um, his neighbor two doors down is Will Smith. I appraise the house in between them. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, I'm a system in a nice house. Yes. Oh, it was an awesome house. This okay. is the first house right. I did, which had hidden TVs in the walls. They were like flush mounted inside the walls in certain rooms. Huh. And so you walk in and go, okay, it's a room. Turn on the TV and you could see, the, could see TV the TV through the room, through the wall, I mean. Oh, wow. cool. Um, and this guy owned a pipe company or something like that. It's hmm. amazing how many people are just loaded doing stuff that you would think is like, like they make, you know, paper or plastic caps or something like that yeah but it was in between their two houses and no neither of them were out mowing their lawns the rock and <laughs> mill smith were not walking their walking their dogs or anything like that um so that's a brush with the celebrity but you were there yeah that's yeah cool, though. i did a lot of houses in that area so you watch that keeping up with the kardashians then a lot of houses in that area mm. this is when i was very inexperienced too so i was just measuring it taking four or five or six photos because they didn't care how many photos you took front rear street one or two on the inside now you got to take a picture of everything on an appraisal <laughs> um, and that's before digital photos so we actually had um, i had a digital camera back then but your camera could hold 64 photos tops or something like that um, but times have changed um out here no nothing no no Not famous too much people. here <laughs> yeah but uh i've definitely done some weird houses um, again i always go back to orange county la uh, you mind telling another one? No, go for it. <laughs> so when I started, my mentors all, uh, oh, I've done uh, Little Richard's house, and I've done Smokey Robinson's house, and I've done Lenny Dykstra's house. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'm all, oh, cool, this is going to be awesome. And um, I, in two years as a trainee, nothing. I mean, I did a lot of interesting stuff, but nothing like, oh, my God, I, this was crazy. The last week before I moved out here, I got an order to do one in uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, mm -hmm. which is overlooking the ocean. Um, and it's this house, you know, whatever, big house. And I, I get there and the entrance, you kind of walk downstairs to get to it. And there's the double door and they're hand carved animals of elephants and giraffes and zebras and lions, double door. And I get to the door and I look to my left and there's a giant pile of kitchen garbage like hmm. egg cases and Swanson's TV dinner boxes and, and Playgirls, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'm all, okay. And I knock on the door and the guy answers it and he's wearing a bathrobe and he's all, you look familiar? And I'm all, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you get this a lot? Yeah, here we go. It's, this sounds <laughs> like, I don't know. It sounds like a recurring theme here. I don't know. So anyways, I'm all, okay, I'm here to do the house. So I, I measure the house and it had a tennis court. The tennis court was brand new immaculate the house was falling apart and so i'm measuring it do all my stuff now i'm going to go inside and he lets me in and he's all do you work out at gold's gym and i'm all i do not work out at gold's gym and he's all, okay and he's all, i'm gonna go in my room now I'm all, okay so he takes off <laughs> the house is enormous okay and there's just all these artifacts like um tables from india and africa and you know all sorts of weird artifacts so you could tell he's a traveler but there's also a lot of hunting trophies all over the place. So heads of deer and tigers and stuff like that. And I'm all, okay, I get it. This, that's what this guy does. And um, I go in the kitchen. Kitchen has a telescope looking out on the ocean. And the entire kitchen countertop is covered with cups. There's, you can't put anything on the countertop because there's cups everywhere. I'm all, okay. Open the pantry, multiple levels. Every, every level is empty except one level, which is black beans. <laughs> 80 cans of black beans. Weird. And that's all that was in this pantry. And I'm all, what the heck is going on? And where is this guy? Okay. Yeah, I'm like, what is he? Should, should so, I be here? So I go downstairs. It's, it's got a lower <laughs> level. And this is where the big animals were. He had a full size lion in there. He had a elephant head on the wall oh my gosh and it's like oh my god and I, I go into one room and there is like a dining room sized room and there is a pile of animal skins that are stacked up to my knee zebras and all the other kind of animals you get so it's like oh my god this this guy's serious about all this kind of stuff go in another room another dining size room downstairs elephant tusks there are probably 50 elephant tusks in this guy's other downstairs dining room and in the middle of this room was a big circular bar so wow. he was really into partying in the 70s or something like that <laughs> okay um but i'm measuring this house 
And in the garage, by the way, there's a brand new Porsche and a brand new Corvette. Okay. Um, but I'm measuring this house and I'm like, where is this guy? And I got to go in the master bedroom now. So I knock on the door and he's like, come on in, open the door. And he's in bed. In the bed. He's in the bed. And I'm all, what the heck? And there's cat poo all over the bedroom floor. I could not oh. walk without stepping on cat poo. And it had been there for ages. It oh, was man. hard. Most of it was like just a, a layer of cat poo. And he's sitting in bed. He's sitting in bed. Sitting in bed. All right, dude. So I go into the next room, which is the, oh, um, the main bathroom. It's got to climb in a ladder to get to a sauna that will hold multiple people. Okay. But it was like maybe four feet tall. So you got to go in. You got to climb in like a cave. And then it had a four-person hot tub. <laughs> the, the surround of the hot tub had maybe 30 bottles of shampoo. And then in the hot tub was... It's maybe to get all the cat poo off. I don't know. But, Holy cow. But it, Man. He, he kept his tennis shoes in the hot tub. It was filled to the brim with tennis shoes. This is the same house as the beans and all that stuff. So, so that was interesting. Um, wow. But I, I, what I was going to say is that I measured this house and I'm all, what's this area right here? There's an area in the middle that I don't know. There's a room here, room here. Room. And I'm all, hey, uh, this area right here. He's like, yeah, you can't go in there, I'm all, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Secret room or arsenal or something like that. But uh, huh. yeah. So that was the very, that was. So never got in there. No, I never got in there. And back then okay. nobody really cared. So okay. um, uh -huh. I was more curious. Um, but not that curious. No. no. <laughs> um, but that was like one of the very last appraisals I did in California, if not the last one. So that one always. So it was like your encore, you know. Oh, yeah. I had, it's like, I, wow. had a, I got a story. The I finale. <laughs> this is it. I'm not coming back out. Yeah, exactly. Well, wow. let's, let's shift to uh, hot topics in the real estate market. A lot of our listeners are real estate agents and uh, would... I would be very interested to hear from an experienced appraiser from your perspective on, on, you know, trends and, and updates, things that are changing. I know you mentioned uh, Fannie Mae's updating yeah. their inspection waiver uh, policy or somehow. Yeah. Tell us about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I think a year or two ago, maybe a few years ago, they came out with something called the property inspection waiver, mm -hmm. which is basically saying, hey, in this situation, we don't need an appraisal. And we see those quite yeah, a we bit do a lot. as a mortgage yeah, company. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if they're still doing it, but the, they are. They are. But mm -hmm. I heard that they're coming out with a new thing, and I wrote it down. It's called value certification. Okay. And what that is is essentially the same thing. It's saying you don't need an appraisal. Um, okay. And it's not because the value is there, even though it's in the name. It's because you make enough money, you're putting enough down, whatever the circumstances are, mm -hmm. they, they're saying you don't need an appraisal. But the name is, is misleading because it's essentially saying the value is fine, but it's not saying that at all. Okay. So... Um, the point is that some borrowers might be misled by that and think, oh, I'm buying this $700,000 house. And Fannie says the value certification is legit. Therefore, my house is worth $700,000. Some of these people are in for a rude awakening when they go into refinance in a year and they actually need a full appraisal. And it's not worth that amount. And a perfect case of that um, literally just happened a week ago. They paid cash. So it wasn't an inspection waiver. So they paid cash, didn't need an appraisal. And now they're refinancing. They put all this money to, to uh, renovate it and go out to inspect it. And the house is 200 square feet smaller than what they think it is. Now, the house is supposed to be 1,700. So it's actually 1,500, which is significant mm -hmm. on a house like that. Mm -hmm. um, measured it twice, um, like Santa's list. Check him who's naughty and nice. Um, <laughs> but it's clear what the error is. And now we have to be the har harsh reality of saying, yeah, your house is not that big. And an appraisal could have prevented that. So the point is that with this value certification, um, it it could still it should still be in a homeowner's best interest to possibly get an appraisal just to make sure they're not overspending for peace of mind. Um, whether it's for um, this situation, we have people that are uh, international buyers, people from Canada. Um, they don't know the exchange system. They right. just want to make sure they're not overspending. So appraisers. <laughs> People think we just do mortgage work. We do a lot of non-lender work. I was going to ask you that. So true fit, footage does a lot of non-lender yeah. type our, of evaluation. Yeah, our bread and butter is the the, the mortgage stuff. However, right. an appraisal is an appraisal. Um, and so we do uh, divorce. We do bankruptcy. We do pre-listing. People mm -hmm. don't know what to list their house for. Um, data passing, estates type of stuff. Um, we measure properties. Sometimes people go, there's so many additions here. 
we have no idea how much the square footage is and what it really is square footage. So can you come out and, and do that? And gotcha. so um, not to push true footage too much, but that's kind of why I'm no, here. Go for it. But true footage is a, is a national company mm -hmm. um, and it's not an appraisal management company. Um, appraisal management company is a company that uh, lenders have to go through who then are the middleman to find appraisers. Uh, true footage is actually an appraisal company. And so you're working with the appraisers. Here in Arizona, we have, I think, 12 or 13 appraisers, Tucson, Phoenix, outlying areas. But we have uh, presence in most places across the country. So you're from Ohio. Mm -hmm. And if you need an appraisal in Ohio, you can call True Footage or go to their website, contact that number there, and we can have an appraiser take care of you in that situation. Um, we do a lot of work for a lot of na nationwide lenders, um, but a lot of smaller banks, they don't need to work with an AMC um, or they can hire direct. And so we're a good resource across the country. Um, and so we're not dealing with, I don't wanna say we're not dealing with a middleman, but because there's layers still, there's always gonna be layers, um, but it's actually an appraisal, appraiser run company that provides the service. And that's where I work now. I like working there. so. That's that's what we do. Awesome. And and do you do? I think you had mentioned that a lot of the work you do actually is um, analyzing the the inspections and, oh, and yeah. turning them into the appraisal reports. Is yeah, that that's that's another trend that's been going on. Is that it? You know, the the big problem that we get or complaint we get from mortgage people is it takes so long for the appraisal, and that's why they did the property inspection waiver and whatnot because it takes so long. Right. Um, I can get in the shortage of appraisers and all that kind of stuff, which is important. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're always trying to make it faster. And so they said, well, what if we had a person that would inspect the property and another person writing up the report? And that hasn't really caught on that well because you don't know who's inspecting the property mm -hmm. and they might not know what to look for. They don't have your experience and eyes on okay. what to look for. And okay. they, t they might take a picture and it's like, is that Formica or is that marble? So can that potentially cause an efficiency problem? Well, that's the thing. Um, it could cause an, it's, it, it's a, it causes um, skepticism from appraisers because it's like, why should I trust somebody else to do that? Oh, um, I see. Okay. And so there's the, it hasn't really caught on. The, what we do at True Footage, and at least in the Phoenix market, we actually got a guy who's he's been appraising as long as me. His license number is like 10 digits off for me. And he's like, I don't want to write reports anymore. I just want to inspect properties. He inspects everything or many things except FHA, which I have to do because it's that's how FHA is. Mm -hmm. I built a rapport with him. Our team has built a rapport with him. He knows what to look for. We have confidence in this guy. His certification is going in the report. So his liability is covered. I'm just writing up the report. So okay. I'm spending a lot more time in the office than I used to, as opposed to the mix of seeing properties and writing up reports. I'm not sure I'm really into that because <laughs> I'll go three days without leaving the office and you know, you got to shower every once in a while, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> Hopefully. So I, I, I'm trying to designate at least one day a week where I go out and inspect property still. Okay. But it's working in this situation. Um, one drawback is that when I'm, say I have 10 assignments in my queue and I go inspect them, it's like, oh, that's complex. I did this one. That's a doozy in my stack. I know it's a doozy that I'm going to have to work with. I got a stack of appraisals I got to do that I didn't inspect. I'm not pre-screening to see, oh, is that one going to be hard? Is that one going to be easy? So I'll mm. get to the next one and go, okay, and I'll start researching and go, oh, it's a hard one. Complex, like comps are all over the map or whatever. And it feels like that part of not seeing the property initially on your own, it kind of sets you up for the unknown of what I'm getting into next. I'll so, bet. Yeah, that that's makes a, sense. That's a little bit of a challenge for me. That's me personally. I don't know how other people feel about it. <laughs> Um, so George, but, I have a question for you. Just getting back to the property inspection waivers yes. with conventional financing. So when you're getting these orders, mm -hmm. even if the person has, let's say they're opting out of a property inspection waiver, is that when you're getting the request? Like, I, are you seeing a lot of that? You know something I don't, we appraisers don't know the circumstances of when we get orders. Okay. So okay. whether they choose to get an appraisal when they got the waiver or not, that's not conveyed to us. So we give our customer that option. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like they're, hey, we, we received a property inspection waiver, but you still have the option right. to order an appraisal. Yeah. yeah. And you've remodeled your house. And this is why, yeah, yeah, why you may want to do that. Yeah. I, I've had a friend of mine who works for a, a, a lender and he said, hey, can I do this? Exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I go, you probably can, but 
who knows? It could kill your deal if the value comes in low. It could, yeah. yeah. But no, we don't. That's not conveyed to us if that's a circumstance, okay. unless okay. it's a refinance and the homeowner tells us that. I'd say probably ninety nine point something percent of the time they opt into the property inspection waiver. Yeah, so most, most of the, most time, of the yeah. time they do. Yep, yep, yeah. Especially where it's a, a low loan to value situation, and they're you know they're looking at it as a long term real estate purchase it just becomes less yep, important they're okay with one. the price and yeah. yeah i mean yep. if they're doing cash out refi um you know or whatever the circumstance where they want their the value of what they've done appreciated mm -hmm. yeah you got to do the full appraisal any other um updates to the appraisal process that we should all know about uh measuring properties there was something about an update to how properties need to be measured that's that's ANSI. That's ANSI uh, okay yeah and it basically um appraisers are taught a way to measure properties okay. um but there's so many nuances that there has not been a universal standard that every appraiser adheres to okay and so everybody's close okay However, um, they said, no, no, we need to have something in place that makes it, makes it so everybody goes by the same guidelines. So it's ANSI, and I forgot the code for it, but it's basically saying that, hey, I'm measuring to these standards of how to measure a single family house. How you measure a condo is exactly the same as it was. It's the airspace. But the big key thing with this ANSI thing is stairs. Because it used to be that two-story house measure the, the footprint, you measure the upstairs, and you subtract the stairs. Um, hmm. With ANSI, you you, it's almost like you double count the stairs. So it's, huh. it's a little... Okay. That is weird. It doesn't make sense to me, and I, I don't agree with it, but that's the standard that we are now supposed to follow. Okay. I, my follow-up question was going to be, have you run into any situations where a listing agent was not happy? Somehow your measurement didn't agree with theirs, and it kind of came down to that... Not to that. Okay. Because if anything, it's going to be, uh, it'll be higher under the new right, guidelines. Right, if they're double With a two-story house. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, and, and I've been doing it long enough where if that, if that comes up, I know how to have those conversations. Okay. A problem with many appraisers is that they are not personable. And I'm not saying this for hmm. all appraisers, but they don't like talking to people. They we, like, hear, we hear stories about that <laughs> all the time. We hear from our customers. And, and that's the thing. It's like when you're at a house and someone says, hey, look at these comps. Is that, are you trying to influence me or are you just trying to share information? Some people will go, you're trying to pressure me here and they'll freak out. Really? So, oh, yeah. so I, I mean, I'd like to advise my refinance clients all the time to take, take some time to, to make an intentional list of, of all of the upgrades. Now, not all of right. them are going to really matter if it's like 10 years old or even if it's three or five years old, it might not matter. But you know, present it to the appraiser. It could help, it could help him with his overall analysis. Like that's, but you know how no, some no. people are. Their their bedside manner leaves something to be desired. Okay. They just they, they could rub you the wrong way. They could say things in a way that can make you feel like they're pressuring you. Okay, I've I've definitely felt okay. that before. Um, here here's an example, kind of like that. Um, I was appraising a house, um, non pool home, and it's a track neighborhood where there's a ton. Of, I always just say the neighborhood Santan Heights, which mm -hmm. is in Santan Valley, mm -hmm. and the agent gives me a packet, and it has all these cops in there. And every comp she gives me has a pool. <laughs> and okay. now it's like, okay, I know I'm not going to use any pool comps because i got plenty of non-pool comps. I do my report. I could submit it and then have a reconsideration, come back and go, what about these comps? And they're the exact same comps that she tried giving me. Or yeah. I could be very clear in my report. I used non-pool homes for comparison. There are plenty of non-pool homes. There's no reason to use pool homes. Hint, hint, hint. Yeah. That's how I write my reports to try to preemptively avoid problems down the line that's good and and when i run into an agent who brings up something like that or a homeowner that brings up something like that and it's not like i don't want to give them their voice it's just i'd rather speak about it professionally on paper yeah. and explain things to them um but that's that's a little different than what we're talking about because it's the pressure thing um, and how some appraisers are just not personable and will take things the wrong way i i see it as information I'll, I'll consider everything. I'm not going to hmm. blindly ignore something that someone gives me. Was it, did, did I get straight off topic there? No, 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 no that's no, perfect. That's great, that was yeah. perfect. Um, ask the appraiser. Yeah. I want to do this. Okay, go. so we get a lot of questions uh, as we do our shows. and, and um, I don't know these questions. Appraisal, appraiser, appraisal questions just tend to come in regardless of, of 
necessarily what the topic is. So um, we've collected a few, and we thought, what a perfect opportunity. We've got George in the house. Let's let's get his expertise on that. So if you don't mind, I'm going to just fire I'm, off questions. I'm scared you're going <laughs> to give me one where I'm going to well, give a BS answer. Let, let, <laughs> <laughs> let's start with, uh, in your view, what are the top three factors that influence a home's value? Oh, gosh. Top three things. I'm, there's a lot, lot more than three factors, yeah, I'm sure. But I know. What are the top three? Location. Okay. <laughs> I don't want Obviously. to say cliche. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I'll go into each one if I, if I think about it. Location, you know, hey, here's my house. And why aren't you using comps over here? Because of location. Your house is in a, I don't say worse neighborhood, but a different neighborhood, different builder or whatever. So that's location builder. Um, so location is huge. Whether it's outside influence, traffic, um, under a flight path or something like that. Okay. Um, gosh. Upgrades is a very vague answer. Because so it, what type of upgrades? That's, that's, I know. that's. Yeah. I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> Wait, where, where's the biggest bang for the Base, buck? Baseboards. It's all about baseboards. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, Jameson, if you're listening, all that effort. It's, it's all <laughs> baseboards matter. I they love, just do. I love doing I, baseboards. I, I watched I my I watched my buddy Jameson take. I don't know. It was probably about a year or so to finish his baseboards, and I helped him a little bit with it because um, he it was very expensive to replace base. Have somebody do it, so yeah. he decided to tackle it on his own. And it's a lot more work than it it appears like it would be. I love doing baseboards. <laughs> I, I feel weird. I love doing any kind of molding, whether it's crown molding yeah. or baseboards. I love that kind of stuff. But no, not baseboards. Baseboards do not, which, in the grand which, scheme of things. So so if you're upgrade, like what rooms? You know, there's the, there's kind of, I'm going to preempt this by saying that there's the whole lipstick on a pig kind of thing. If you have a crappy old home and you remodel just the kitchen, great, but that's not going to, the house is still crappy in general. Okay. But, but kitchen is definitely something. Kitchen and bathrooms, curb appeal is huge. Um, and that goes into marketing a home and whatnot. You could have a perfect house, but if it looks like junk on the front, um, it could impact not value, but how quickly it sells. And then that could lead to you going, oh my God, it's not selling. I better lower the price. We used to run into stuff where somebody would, let's say, update something. Mm-hmm but they would say it was updated and upgraded when really, if you look at what was done, it was maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of homes Good where it's point. like, hey, we got granite countertops. It's like, yeah, but you still got the same cabinets that you had from 1975. <laughs> and I could see that they're crooked still. Yeah. Um, the kitchen and bath are still the top two things you could do. Um, but it's it's, you can't, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in a way that's not just blindly do just that and nothing else. Um, the overall maintenance of a home is, is important. Um, I killed a deal a couple days ago that was remodeled. It had original roof that was looked like it was about to leak. The windows were, this is like a South Scottsdale. It had okay. original crank windows. Everybody else had dual pane, new roof. Um, it had granite countertops, but the cabinets like i was just mentioning were yeah. old and you could tell that it wasn't done in a way that was really professional in which a, a lot of these workmen like have. manner that's the term that uh, drunk workmen <laughs> drunk, <laughs> drunk workmen <laughs> yeah, honey yeah. i got this <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of stuff um it might read well in the mls listing but when you have an actual set of eyes look, look at it, it um you could see, oh my God, this is not on par with these comps that are right down the street that are saying that literally are top to bottom remodels. Um, I see it a lot and, and, and that's the thing. Well, they're mostly purchases. And I wonder about the homeowners if they're really educated on what they're getting into. Hmm. Um, uh, th I, this is off topic, but this, we're in a sales concession world right now. Everybody's given sales concessions. And when I see a, a report where there's no sales concessions in the contract, it's like someone's not helping hmm. this borrower well because they should be getting 3% on this thing. Um, so, yeah, curb appeal, kitchen and bath, those are the main things. And location. Location, yeah, location is okay. huge. Awesome. Next question is, what is the difference between an appraisal and an inspection? Oh, boy. Because... It kind of gets mixed up a lot. It does you a know, lot. Because, you know, especially people who, 
are buying a home and they haven't bought a home in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And you're like, okay, you know, get with your, your agent and order the inspection. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought you do that. No, that's the appraisal. Well, isn't it an appraisal inspection? It is an inspection, but it's not quite the same. So I was the uh, president <laughs> of the, clear uh, this up. I'll, I, I'll, I always have a story. I was president of the BNI chapter of uh, queen Creek a long time ago. Okay. And um, I was the appraiser and we had a home inspector there. No, we didn't have a home inspector. We had a bunch of people, no home inspector. And four or five years later, the uh, blind guy, he wasn't blind, but he did blinds, okay? Okay. Um, window blinds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, wait, where are we going here? He's all, hey, I got a referral for you. <laughs> and it was for a home inspector. And it's like, I call my buddy back, I'm all, you don't know what I do. I've known you four or five years. You still don't know what I do. I don't do home inspections. I'm an appraiser. So the home inspector is um, coming out to check the systems and check the um, the durability, longevity, the, uh, you know, whether it's the appliances, whether it's the roof, whether it's termite damage, um, that's a whole different specialty there. They're mm -hmm. looking to inspect the structural integrity of the house, of the components of the house. Okay. We don't do that except for certain lent, certain, um, types of loans, FHA, VA also, we check to see if things turn on. Um, we have to check. In fact, I just went to Maricopa today to do a final because I had to check to see if there's any leaks. And when I went out there for the first appraisal, the water wasn't on. And so I'm not a plumber, but I turn on the faucets. And if I see leaks at the um, U-joint, is that what it's called? Um, then I have to report it. Um, if the stove doesn't turn on, then I got to report it and they got to fix that kind of stuff. Do I have to put a burrito in the microwave to see if it worked? No, but I have to see if there's power on there. That's an inspection for appraisers. Um, when we do a site visit, we're not necessarily inspecting anything. We're observing and um, taking notes of what we observe as far as the components of the house. You got stainless steel appliances. They could be 20 years old. We'll note that kind of stuff. Okay. But the home inspector's checking to see if things work and you know, what it would take to repair that kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't know anybody who does both, like individuals okay. who are both appraisers and inspectors. They're totally different fields. So, so the third question I had on my list, and it's really just kind of transition, transitions us into the, the fourth segment of our show today, but um, the question is, is what, do, um, what does an appraiser use or do to determine the condition of a home? And that definitely kind of gets into the more of the inspection side of it, I suppose. Yeah, um, it comes with experience, um, and I'll be honest with you, it comes with um, owning a home. And once you're a homeowner, you know what it takes to do certain things, and you know, hey, I put dual pane windows, and that cost me $40,000 on this mm -hmm. giant house, and now I know how, how much it costs for that, how much it costs to put a pool in. And we're not talking condition, I'm talking about components of a sure, house. Sure, sure. Um, but being able to differentiate between a professional remodel and a lipstick on a pig remodel, um, that comes with experience. It's not rocket science, but um, it's something that, that uh, photos on Zillow can't tell you. You know, you could take a picture of you could take a picture of a house. It looks beautiful, and then it looks great, and then you get out there, and there's a high tension power line right behind it that that's photoshopped out uh, okay. or it's done in, in a way where there's filters to mask certain things mm -hmm. so recently we had a new build uh -huh. where the photos on the appraisal actually came in and it wasn't the actual house the, none what? of them were wasn't the actual house a couple of the comps actually it was a different home in the pictures huh. so was i actually it? drove out there and looked at the you know trying to figure out what's going on with this You're this such house. a conscientious little Wasn't officer, so, Jay. That's amazing. Seriously, thank you, Brian. I, I <laughs> was, really it, appreciate that. was it new construction? New construction. Yeah. I don't know. I can't speak for other appraisers. but It was a quality control problem. Well, it could, be, it could be the appraiser did it on purpose, but let's not go there. Let's just assume that he screwed up and accidentally put the wrong photos in the report. We were That's, trying to give him the benefit of the doubt on that. But Yeah, but yeah. I've heard of stories where that happens. I don't, I don't, I'm not firsthand, but I've heard, I mean, yes, I have heard firsthand of that happening, but I can't name names. I, I don't know any names, but I've heard of people doing <laughs> it. It was interesting. They did fix it. I mean, they, yeah, yeah they updated it, fixed it. And, honest yeah. error. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> That's an interesting story. It was, yeah. It was something else. 
So uh, what is your home really worth? I think a lot of our listeners, especially the ones that are uh, considering selling their home or maybe considering a refinance, um, give us a behind the scenes, your perspective on, on the appraisal process and share some tips uh, for homeowners to, who really want to know how to figure out the true value of their home. Like, for example, um, what is the best way for somebody to prepare for an appraisal? Okay, to prepare to help maximize that value. <laughs> I always have a story. <laughs> I've gone to appraisals where it's like I get there and I'm like, "Could you have picked one article of clothing?" I always, up? I always wondered that. Like, the, how if, if there's clutter, like how does that affect? It, it makes you wonder who. who and this goes into bias, which is a whole different can of worms. But mm-hmm. you get in a house, and I don't <laughs> care what their whatever is, but it's like I'm here to do something that's going to help you get a loan, and I get it if you're a tenant. But if you're the owner here and you're not, you got uh, every dirty dish on the book on the counter here, and I, I don't understand. And I just quietly do my job. Um, and I always say, I don't appraise your stuff. I appraise your house. Because I'll, I'll run into homeowners. They go, oh, you can't come out. I got to have the maid come out. And it's like, I don't. And the reality is, I want to get done so I can get paid. I don't want to be on your schedule and wait two weeks. I want to get this assignment done mm-hmm. and move mm-hmm. on to the next one. With that in mind, um, you should clean up because it, it could impact the perception that the appraiser has of your home and how you maintain your home. How you live with your stuff is probably indicative of how you take care of your house. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to assume that your house is junk. I'm still going to observe all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but clean up a little bit. You know, you don't have to clean everything. I've seen houses where it's like, does anyone ever actually live here? Refinances. But I, I've seen a majority of mine, it's like, yeah, the bed's not made, and here's some shoes on the ground, and backpack, and stuff on the counter, bills on the counter. But it's not like hoarder home, that kind of stuff. I, I would think, and this is maybe it's my perspective, but I would hope to think that other people feel this way. But um, I don't judge you on living I, I, yeah, judge, yeah, I judge you on houses. what the heck's going on here. Sure. Okay. However, I try to block that out and go, okay, I'm going to praise the house well, it as could the house. Potentially lead you to question the overall condition of the house. Totally. Right? Yeah, it, it, it does. And it, it goes into your baseline. And that's the whole point of do the, doing the site visit mm-hmm. is you get a baseline of comparison. And when, when I go to a house and I'm about to leave and the homeowner says, well, what's it worth? It's like, this is step one. Get the baseline. Now I'm going to find out which comps are best. And if I can find a house exactly like yours, perfect. Probably not. I'm going to find some here. I'm going to find some here. And your house is worth somewhere in between. So I, I truly do not know the answer to that when, when I'm leaving a house there. Okay. Um, but yeah, clean your house. Not, not thoroughly, but have it presentable. Um, don't be a jerk when, when the appraiser gets there. That was the next one is common mistakes that people make. <laughs> Do you have a tissue? I'm sorry. This is not bad pod, by the way. Uh, oh. I don't have one handy. <laughs> I apologize. That's okay. Yeah, I, don't I have got one a sleeve. Either. I'll be fine. <laughs> um, so does it actually help? I, we, we already talked about this a little bit, but does it actually help? We didn't, I don't know if we really answered the full question. I for somebody to hand you a list of upgrades that Absolutely. they've done. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so what do you, what do you, what's your advice to people on how to present that to you and, and what to have on it? Just kind of casually, just kind of matter-of-factly, and it, hopefully you made a list, and just say, hey, I have a list of all our upgrades. I'm sure you got everything, but this is all what we've done. Okay. And I did it when I had my house refinanced. Did this, year it was done. Did this, year it was done. I've had people, they put, here's how much we spent on it. It's 10 pages. And it's like, I don't care how much you spent on it. I, I'll take a note of that, but I just care when you got it done. Okay. Um, What's a guideline for so acquisition reset? will not play into the value, like acquisition cost of well new counters or new. You know, I said that kind of just off the cuff, but if you see something that costs a lot, it makes you think about well, wait a minute, what really did they spend their money on here? Is this more than run of the mill backyard remodel, as opposed to ah oh, nice backyard? Um, so. I've seen it. My point is, I've seen it excessive, where they say we spent five thousand dollars on baseboards. It's like, okay, great, they're the standard baseboards. Um, when you've done all this stuff, itemize it and at least make a list of it. If you want to put the how much you spent on it, I don't need every single receipt. You might want to put fifty thousand here. Okay, yeah, hundred thousand for this pool or whatever. Um, 
but no, if you just say, hey, I, 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 I always humble myself with everything and I like when people do it and they say, hey, I know you're doing your job, but here I made a list of upgrades. Um, what I do at every inspection is I'll do my thing, I'll make a note of stuff, and then especially if it's a refinance or if the homeowner's there, I'll say, hey, is there anything you want to talk about? Is there anything you want to point out about your house? Any recent upgrades? And that's when they'll say, oh, yeah, we put these two-inch blinds up. And, and it's like, oh, and I'll make a note of it. I'm mm -hmm. not going to go, that's not, doesn't count, doesn't count. I don't, okay. I'll just smile and take notes. Um, but making a list is definitely good of things. And, and how recent matters. So when people say, you know, like I, I, I redid my kitchen seven years ago. It still matters. Okay. Depends on the age of the house. Okay. Um, if it's a 60-year-old house, then... Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of important to, to say when it was done. Some people, just kind of like the condition thing, people will, they might have remodeled their house seven years ago and it still looks brand spanking new. Um, I mean, generally speaking, when does it, the remodel, the project, when does it kind of start fading in terms when, of its relevance when, for when the, value? When the owners start neglecting it and it starts showing. Because mm. you could, like, okay. and I, I, like our house, we had granite countertops mm -hmm. built in 86, but they looked like junk. And my wife said, we got to remodel them. No, it's great. And I'm going to praise her. <laughs> <laughs> but it's dated. It was well-maintained, but my wife did not like that. And so it's like, hey, when you go to sell it, people are going to come in and go, that's old. And so there's a perception thing on that front. Um, but if it's well-maintained and, it, and it, if it has a style that's still acceptable, mm -hmm. that's a key thing there. Um, okay. Granite's great. But if you got granite with all these weird bevels on it, nothing against that, but, but it's, it's done. Yeah. People don't do that anymore. Yeah, okay. Um, so it depends. The answer to every appraisal question <laughs> is it depends. I don't know if you've heard that before. <laughs> we hear that a lot. It, I'd have to see this. Like, I, I know you're just talking um, hypothetically here. Yeah, of course. But if yeah. I had a situation where you were saying, hey, what about this? I'd have to see it to really have an opinion on if it impacts yeah. value. And it's a matter of looking at what's in the neighborhood too. Yeah. If everybody's got quartz and the whitewash cabinets and, you know, farmer's sink, and you've got 20 year old granite and oak cabinets, nothing wrong with that, but it stands out in a negative way in comparison yeah. to the rest of the neighborhood. If everybody has the same oak and granite, it's not gonna. So in some yeah. ways you really do have to like keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. That's, ex that's exact. I wrote it down here. Got to keep up. <laughs> Got to keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> we just finished remodeling my mother-in-law's bathroom, and I and I I think they Isn't did a reasonably done? good job. It's just about done. We're waiting just for about. the glass, but I, they, I, I believe yeah. The it, glass is the hardest part everywhere. It's yeah, like two or three weeks or something like yeah. that. But um, and, and you know, I try to uh, influence the decor, the the direction of the motif and like the colors and you know this and that. And I I I definitely had some input on it. It it you know, it, it's my mother-in-law. I love you to death, Kendall. I don't know if you're going to listen to this or not, but. You know, it's not She's listening. fully contemporary, and I look at these things, you know, in that kind of a light, but, um, yeah. My, my wife Pinterests a lot of stuff <laughs> and, and sends it to but me. But not everybody all. does, yeah. Yeah, she, she does it a lot, and, I, you know, even though I know what people like, I, my personality doesn't match with that. Yeah. I'm very conservative with stuff, and it's like, there's nothing wrong with it, just leave it. <laughs> well, I, let, I mean, this, let's wrap with the common mistakes people make. And I, I think one of them is just having it. Like, I don't care what it looks like. It's what I want. It's, it's me. Yeah. Like, so what are the common mistakes that people that you can think of? Maybe one or two that people make that, that really do affect. We, we really did go in this blind because that's a good question. <laughs> I, should have I have earlier. I'm trying to think. I mean, we've kind of touched on it, you know, with, um, you know, leaving your cabinets, you know, golden oak. And I think over, it's, it's over improving compared to the neighborhood. Oh, good one. Over okay. improving. It, now, if you're okay. in a, a ultra rich neighborhood where all bets are off, you do whatever you want. Okay. And here's the thing that, that um, and I know you have a lot of high end viewers. Like we all, we all have yeah, multi billionaire friends. Okay. <laughs> um, I've seen, and I remember this in California back to my Jeff Bezos. Days. Are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeff. Thanks for yeah. tuning in. <laughs> um, people would buy a house that was remodeled two years ago. Got it. Seriously. Rich people. The, the mansion kind of stuff. Okay. Got it. And you just see the, the, the driveway with two-year-old granite in it. Two-year-old cap. It's like, wow. 
So it depends on the t- your question. It depends on the neighborhood. Okay. If you're in a track neighborhood of, you know, KB Homes or TriPoint or whatever, what are your neighbors doing? So, you don't want to over improve. So I ran into that very, very scenario maybe a year ago or so. I had a um, customer that was wanting to refinance and they that the neighborhood was maybe only a year or two old. And it turned out that they had just com- upgraded the just everything in the house to like just super high end finishes and just no, no, no on their own okay, after, okay. after they moved in and they went to refinance and, and, you know, sure enough, you know, the appraiser goes out there and, and um, he's, he's not even using some of the comps in the neighborhood that are their exact same floor plan, mm-hmm. the exact same age because they're not nowhere near right. the same treatment m- rendering them not actually a viable comp. Right, for the right. house because their house was so so upgraded. So the appraiser used and that comps. became a whole thing on on the valuation that they ended up getting. Wow! But was the was the value higher than what the comps in the neighborhood were? Uh, it was just about no. Yes, it was no. It was just a, it was just slightly higher than the comps, okay. which wasn't in their opinion acceptable. The, the, acceptable. A, a good appraiser is going to look at all that stuff and go, okay here's my neighborhood. Here's the homogenous area of homes that are the same model matches and whatnot. This is definitely above all those. A Mm -hmm. good, a a bad appraiser is going to go. It is what it is. A good appraiser is going to try to get in the mind of a buyer is going to go, wait a minute, let me dig a little deeper. Can I find a comp that has similar upgrades? Even if it's like, we're supposed to use sales within a year. What if the perfect sale that has the exact same upgrades happened 367 days ago? Mm. And you go, oh, I'm not going to use it because it's a year old. That's irresponsible. You got to look for sales that may support a higher value. And then you have to say, would a, would a prudent buyer potentially look in that neighborhood compared to this one? Oh, that one's in a nicer school district. Or that one's got a, you know, whatever. You, you can't just blindly go, here's a house with the same upgrades. It's a comp. You have to look at all these other circumstances because that perfect comp could be just outside your search criteria mm-hmm. or, you know, whether it's distance, whether it's time. Um, we try to stick with one mile, 90 days. Mm-hmm. And if we can't find enough comps, it's like now that's when our nuance comes in. Do I go back further in time? Do I go back further in, in distance? Okay. Do I go to a wider range of, of uh, home sizes? Mm-hmm. That's what a appraiser, that's what the art of appraising is, is massaging your search to try to find data that's relevant, that's credible, that could support your opinion of value. And I, I, I'm not trying to throw anybody in the bus, but I wonder if all appraisers do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if they're not, if they're doing a disservice to the borrower by not doing so. We sold our house in Queen Creek. Um, we were on a cul-de-sac. We had a picturesque view of the Santan Mountains and the Superstition Mountains, and we're on the golf course. And the appraisal came back, no view amenity. Can't find any, any value for this view. <laughs> and okay. I, was pee- I was pissed off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my language. Wow. I was, I was fear as an appraiser. It's like, sure. but we got to sell this thing because of our circumstances. And it's yeah. like, do I really want to put on my appraiser hat and fight this? Hmm. And what is it going to do because... This appraiser might go, too bad. That's what it is. Man, what so a tough decision. We got, we got shafted out of our view amenity yeah. because of a lazy appraiser. I don't remember his name or anything, but he just gave us zero value. You for know our, who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> block it all out. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, that's the kind of stuff that a, a, a good appraiser, I, I think I include myself in that group, would try to figure out. Okay. So speaking of great appraisers, how, <laughs> how does our audience, how do our listeners get a hold of you and, and True Footage? How do, how do they get in contact? Well, you have an international audience. I know that. <laughs> we do. We do. We do. <laughs> um, Thank true, you, George, for noticing. Spanning the globe. Truefootage.tech is the website. Truefootage.tech. Okay. Not dot .com. Dot .tech. Yeah. Um, our, I don't know our local number, um, but we're here in Phoenix. You could look up True Footage and it comes up with our... Uh, you know, point point okay. in the right direction, and we'll have all of your contact information down. You in do that post in, stuff in, where it's in the description. Yep, we will. Yeah, little pop up images. Yep, yep, yep. Fingers <laughs> pointing, and yeah, yeah. George, so awesome having you on the show. Uh, big thank you again to uh, Dan Demerit and True Footage for letting us have some time <laughs> with you, George. And and I mean, it's been an awesome 
learning experience to sit down and for sure. it chat with you. I uh, want to thank our listeners for coming along yet again. Uh, we really appreciate you guys and, and uh, sticking with us. Uh, absolutely would love for you to smash that thumbs up button if you're watching on YouTube. Um, give, comment down below. What do you guys want to want us to talk about next or any questions you might have for George. Um, we, we love answering those questions and engaging with everybody. Um, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you can, hit that bell because then you'll be alerted to when uh, we, we post new episodes and uh, you won't miss them. Um, that's it for now. Uh, we've got some great guests coming up. We're looking forward to our future shows and we'll see you guys again soon. Thanks again, George. Thanks again, George. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs>